I think we can now already start our today's event and we have been waiting for this event and for this day for quite a long period of time already. We have been waiting patiently to have this event and I'm really happy that today we're going to have this presentation. It's good that we can get all together to come together at least online to present the book that has been written by Professor Piotr Stomka. My name is Sofia Olinek and I'm the coordinator of the program to support of democracy in the Heinrich Böll Foundation. And I'm going to be the moderator for our today's meetings. And first of all, I would like to uh, welcome all of the people who have joined us in Zoom right now or all the people who are following our event online and Facebook. And our event is going to be recorded and it's going to be streamed on Facebook as well. And so you'll have the opportunity to rewatch our broadcasting on Facebook. Once again, would like to ask all of our participants in Zoom to choose the language. We're going to have the simultaneous interpretation into Ukrainian and English. So please make sure that you will choose the right language to speak. The broadcast will be held in Ukrainian. So I guess uh, this is all from the technical moments and I'm really happy to get to the most contentful part of our today's meetings. Last year, we have been highly collaborating with a number of researchers and professionals in order to provide Ukrainian audience with Pyotr Stompka's book for the sociology and the analysis of the society that has never been translated into Ukrainian before. And Стомка, Це Тішнера, і ми член Американської академії наук, гостьовий професор низки світових університетів. Також це є автор, власне, книга на соціологія, аналіз суспільства. І я дуже рада, що професор Штомка мав можливість до нас долучитися. Stomka has the opportunity to join us, so I'm pleased to welcome here as well. We also have Vladimir Turchinovsky, PhD, uh, the Dean of the Faculty of the Social Sciences for the Ukrainian Catholic University. We're pleased to welcome Vladimir as well. We have Oksana Mikheva, the Professor of the Sociology Department for the Ukrainian Catholic University as well, the Professor of the European University for Frankfurt on Oda, who's also representing the team who has been working for the translation and publishing of this book in Ukraine. We are now have Halina Teodorovich joining us as well, who is the translator of the Ukrainian version for the book. So, Helena, welcome you to our conversation. I do hope that you're going to join us soon. And we have Yaroslav Arushishan, the member of Ukrainian Parliament, the co-founder and the member of the board for Lviv Business School. So we're pleased to welcome Yaroslav as well. I'm pleased to welcome all of you here and just a couple of words before we get to the main discussion, to the main presentation, why it was important to all of us to support, why it was important for the Heinrich Bell Foundation to support the publication of this book. The story started summer last year and with the help of the coordination with Miroslav Kashuk and Ms. Oksana, who is also with us here, and I do believe who is one of the drivers of the project, and the project wouldn't have been that successful if it wasn't for him. So first of all, when we have been talking why this book is relevant for now, for us, why it is important for us right now, what have we been tracking all of this process? We started this conversation in June, and then half a year passed while, this, while the book has been with us. We have a lot of things changed in the society. We've noted the challenges, the events, how the pandemic is damaging every sphere of our life and how it influences all of the people and the world we're living around. We have seen those gaps. We 
can see those inequalities that are raising those challenges that have not been noticed before. They have they become visible in 2020. The 2020 has become a year for a challenging year for democracy, democratic values, and the rule of law. And we can see it still now, and you can see that in those events that take place in Ukraine and outside Ukraine and in every country all over the world. But at the same time, if we will not speak about the challenges, we should also mention that that was the year of trust, the trust that started to raise in the society, the re-evaluation of the values that we're living into, re-evaluation of the, our readiness to protect the human rights, to protect the democratical principles, to protect the healthcare as well, creating the space for innovation and creating the space for rethinking our approaches to life. In one of the lectures when I was getting prepared to this, event and I really like the quote from this from Professor Stompka that what is going on in the society this this the overall sum up of the events in the space and I'm really happy that we can in the framework of our program we can support the development of the space and the environment that we live in with the support of the urbanistic movement the sustainable mobility and the support of the new understanding the, of history and with the support of the publishing business as well so that Ukraine would have the access to the relevant publications to the publication that are very relevant to Ukraine now. And I think that I will stop with that because I do not really want to take a lot of time from our distinguished speakers and I would like to pass the floor to Professor Stompka and I'm going to switch to English here. Professor Stompka, it's a great honor having you here. Uh, on our presentation. I would love if we would all meet offline in, uh, in Kyiv or Lviv, that would be a greatest pleasure. But at least this is what pandemic gave us, that we can be all sitting in different cities and uh, still having it possible uh, to join this meeting. Uh, I, I would like to ask you to kick off the, the, the discussion and your presentation was, was the question regarding this journey, the journey of preparation of your book, how it started and how, was, it a, was it provoked by academic need for the, another book on sociology or it was the challenges or and your observation of the society that you've been living because you have quite a dynamic uh, life in different countries also. How, how, this, how, how have you the journey of the book started? Professor Stonka, you can uh, you can start. I was not sure if I am already. Uh, yes, yes, yes. We can, we can proceed. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, dear Ukrainian friends, good afternoon. I must tell you, I am very happy to have my book now available to Ukrainian readers. Therefore, I first have to thank very warmly to people who made it possible, to the whole team, but particularly to Miroslav Kaszczuk, who initiated the project, and to Galina Teodorowicz, the translator who has been digging through those 800 pages to make them understandable and available to Ukrainian students and Ukrainian colleagues. As I mentioned in my special introduction to the Ukrainian edition, to have one's book translated into foreign language is a very important event for the author because his message is extended. It reaches farther to foreign people, people with different cultural background, different history, different sensibilities. And in this way, the meaning of the text is enriched, is enriched by the readers. Writing books is like a conversation with the readers. And the more readers, the more diversified the audience, the better. And that is the reason why I am very happy about 
translations of my work. And I'm also happy to know that some foreign students will be able to extend their understanding of society, their own place in the society, their own fate in life due to some ideas that I am trying to instill in their heads. They may become more sensitive to social problems they may become better understanding their own social conditions and therefore becoming more active citizens, active in making their own society better. The fact that my sociological reflections are now translated into some 15 languages, including some quite exotic like um, Indonesian, Chinese, Japanese, Persian, and Portuguese, and many others. This fact is extremely rewarding for me. I consider it one of my biggest achievements to reach such wide international audience. I will tell you a true anecdote at one of the World Congresses of Sociology of ISA at Durban, South Africa. I was approached by a sociologist from Azerbaijan. He looked at my Congress badge and said in a really surprised voice, you are Stompka? We are reading your books in Azerbaijan and you are a classic. We believed you were long dead. Can you imagine better compliment for the author, for the academic author? The book which you have in your hands has a long history. It started with my lectures at the Jagiellonian University at Krakow. At the first grade, when I was teaching for many years the course titled Introduction to Sociology. And then my lectures to American students during my 15 teaching assignments in American universities, one semester assignments at places like Columbia University, New York, and the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA. And I was teaching there, again, introductory classes, which were titled in America, Sociology One. I was, of course, teaching other courses on social change, social movements, group processes, social psychology, history of sociology, contemporary sociological theories, many other topics, but I always attached a lot of importance to teaching introductory sociology. Why? Because then you approach students who really don't know anything about sociology and you have to inspire them to put some ideas in their heads and to put them in the way which they will understand. And I have three qualities which I try to realize in my teaching as well as in my writing. Clarity, simplicity, and systematic organization of ideas and teaching undergraduate students, teaching simple sociology in the clear way, but not avoiding different difficult problems is a great challenge. And I always enjoyed this challenge. If you teach students and you look in their eyes, which in normal times is the way I do. Unfortunately, now it is a bit more difficult during pandemics. But if I teach in normal classes, 
I look students in the eyes and I know, I know immediately. If I fulfill my principles of clarity, simplicity and systematic organization, I immediately see if I talk nonsense or if I talk something which they buy, which they purchase, which they understand and enjoy. Sociology in my view is not only for sociologists, not only to be discussed at esoteric um, academic conferences at the congresses of sociology with a group of specialists, sometimes several people, sometimes a dozen. I want to reach with my work wide audience, not only students of sociology, but educated people in general, educated common people. My purpose has always been writing for wide audiences. And the reward of this attitude came when uh, the clerks at the post offices in Poland, at the banks, at some administrative offices, including tax office, tell me, oh, you are Professor Stompka. I have been learning your textbook during my studies because my textbook is available and used not only in sociology, but in journalistic studies, in public administration, in management studies and, and many other fields. So then I encounter people who are not sociologists, but who have got something from me during their studies. Let us return to the story of this particular book, which you have just translated. My usual strategy in my academic work when I teach includes two steps. First is extremely specific, concrete outlines. I never talk before I have a full completed outline and I know what I will say as the last statement in the class. I have those big outlines of several pages before I go to lectures. And then during the lectures, I have recorded them. Why? Because um, you may be acquainted with this phenomenon, which is so typical for science and which is called serendipity. The sudden realization of ideas during talking, during teaching, a kind of eureka um, experience. You suddenly see something you would never see otherwise. And therefore I record it, not to forget later. So many years of teaching introductory sociology in Poland and sociology one in the United States produced a large collection of those outlines and those recordings. And then the luck struck. I was invited as a fellow to the Netherlands Institutes of Advanced Study and I, a S at Wassenaar, a little um, outskirt of The Hague. This is one of the group of institutes, which are the true paradises for scholars. Because you are invited, you are given comfortable living and working conditions, and you are expected only to work on your own project, on your own current research. I was very lucky. I was invited to five of those institutes, both in Europe and in the US, and each resulted in some book. But this book I am talking about today resulted from my stay at the Netherlands Institute. There at Wassenaar, sitting in my office in front of the computer with the outlines, 
and recordings and nothing else. I made it a principle not to read more, not to look for statistics or anything else, just to tell what I know about sociology, because I believe that after years of teaching and writing, I know something. I wanted to share it as it is. So I was putting it in writing directly. And after five months of that work, the, jo the job was done. The book was ready. It was not a very hard time because I usually worked five, six hours a day. And then in the afternoon, I was jumping on a bike and going on the dunes, marvelous dunes along the Northern Sea. So this uh, paradise produced a book, which later I published first in Poland in uh, the year 2002. The book immediately got a status of a bestseller. It sold in the first edition more than 50 thousand copies in Poland. Then, of course, the next edition came 10 years later, the one which you are having in your hand. Now, when the book appeared in Poland, it was a period of a great educational boom. A number of schools of higher education, private and public, have appeared and uh, there are lots of students were trying to raise their educational status. So the book hit on the right moment. And that is one of the secrets of its bestseller status, of its popularity. But in my own life, it was also an important year. And that year I was elected at the World Congress of ISA at Brisbane the president of International Sociological Association for the term of four years. It was a very important distinction for a Polish scholar to be elected by the delegates from 115 countries at the real election when I had five counter candidates, hard counter candidates. So that was a, a year of successes. And in this sense, this book has become uh, also emotionally important for me because it was somehow linked with the good experiences in life. Now something about the character of the book. It is a bit more than the standard textbooks of sociology, which are numerous. In America, you have one appearing every month or every half a year because people try to make money writing academic textbook. There is a huge audience waiting for them. But this book is different from the standard textbooks because standard textbooks are usually of either of two sorts. Either they are the summaries of what other people have been writing or they are descriptions of contemporary society by means of statistics, demography, lots of um, diagrams, cross tabulations, and other informations loaded with current information. My book is different to both because here, I put my own understanding of society and of sociology. One may agree with this or not, but this is mine. This was emphasized in the laudatio of the biggest um, Polish academic prize, which I received for this book, and which in Poland runs under the name Polish Nobel Prize. And in the Laudatio, it was emphasized, and I quote here, that uh, this is the unique author's systematic perspective 
on the nature of sociology and social change. Let me reveal the architecture of the book because each book has a hidden architecture, which uh, normally is not so clearly visible. Let me reveal it to you. There are three foundations, three pillars on which this book is resting. Two are theoretical and one is moral. Theoretical, what is society and how society changes? And moral, what it implies for the obligations of citizens, of the people living in the society. First, concerning the idea of society, for me, society is nothing else but the network of relations between and among the people. It is neither some huge entity over the heads of the individuals. It is also not the simple sum of citizens of the people. It is in between. It is the network of relations. And this is due to the fundamental fact, existential fact of human race, of human nature, that we are social animals, that we always live with other people, next to other people, together with other people, for other people, but never alone. And that red network of relations which surrounds us throughout our life is constantly changing, is constantly dynamically transformed. So as a result, I define society as what happens in between or among the people. Second pillar, history. History is made by human beings. There is no historical necessity. There is no overall historical pattern. Social change occurs because people make it change. Social change occurs because the actions of the people in relation to other people. Nobody changes history alone. Even the big individuals, they need others to change history. I call it the phenomenon of social becoming. And I have devoted separate monographs to this idea. It is also explained in some way in the second part of the book you have in your hands now. And third, moral foundation, moral pillar of the book because we are related to other people, necessarily related, dependent on, on them. But they are also equally dependent on us. This produces some universal moral obligations. We have to take other people into account. We have to remember about them, whatever we do. Such moral obligations are important both for our well being, but also for the success, prosperity of the whole society. In my interpretation, which I put forward in another book on social capital, there are six crucial moral bonds which are implied by this picture of relational society, society made of interpersonal relations. First is trust, then loyalty, then reciprocity, then solidarity, then respect, and finally justice. There isn't time to go deeper into that at this moment. But uh, I believe that uh, the set of those six moral bonds make what I call moral space of a society. 
And moral space is a crucial factor. As I already have said, for the well being of each of us, but also for the success, prosperity, growth, development of the whole society in which we live. The fact that society is made by ourselves, by us, then its fate depends on what we do in this process of social becoming implies also the commitment and activism. We should not wait and see before others do something to change our society, to improve it. We cannot be free riders. Free riders never succeed. We have to dream and we have to act to make our dreams come true. This perspective, which is very simplified, it is a kind of scheme which you may discover yourself in the book, but I was trying to reveal it to you to just beforehand. This perspective about the nature of society and uh, the nature of historical process and the moral commitments which are derived from that, which are implied by that, may be summarized by the idea of sociological imagination. Sociological imagination is the ability to link our biography with the history of our society, to see how our individual fate is dependent on the context of relations with others and how it is embedded in the history of our society. My goal in the book, which is now beginning its Ukrainian career, is to provide the intellectual toolbox for the people, for the enlightened individuals, for the educated citizens who would like to use those concepts, models, theories, to develop their sociological imag imagination. And in this way to contribute to the powerful civil society, committed and active citizenry, which is an absolutely indispensable component of the democratic state. I have never been directly involved in politics, but I find it my mission to contribute via academic writings to the development of sociological imagination of the people and in this way to civil society and to democracy. The book which you have in your hands now is the tangible expression of this aspiration. This is a kind of story of the book. But I understand you also asked for something more, which probably will um, come out in the discussion. It would be probably much better to get to that into discussion. You asked some current questions about the social life under the pandemics, the future, the prospects, the, the um, a huge topic. Exactly. That's But at the moment, I think we would uh, thank you for this inspiring uh, a speech that you gave it's 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 very timely and up to the point because this is what we need this this moral moral space that you mentioned was justice liberty trust and loyalty and um, thank you so much and uh, i'm really i'm indeed very excited and also i'm, I'm not sure it's going to be visible i hope it is the ukrainian issue of the book it's a massive book uh which shows the uh, the, the whole space that you try to that you use and try to incorporate about what the society is and how it is important to be sensitive to the challenges and understanding of of the world we live in and um, indeed my another question was about quite a, quite a huge one but I hope we will also go through the point of the discussion is uh, how do we see the education in post pandemic times. Because I believe it's quite, 
it's quite cha challenging and changing times that we live in. And uh, it's interesting to observe how the society will also change in the meantime. And I hope your book will be also quite a helpful to resource tool to, to analyze and to study these changes. I'm not sure if I hear you correctly, unfortunately. Uh, I have a very vague idea whether you want me now to reflect about those current topics or we put it off until the discussion period, which I would probably prefer because yeah. it would be make it more lively. Exactly. I think that uh, along to my questions, there will be more questions coming uh, from the audience mm -hmm. and we'll collect more. But um, and uh, at the moment, I would uh, then pass the floor to uh, Mr. Volodymyr Turchinovsky. So Volodymyr, hello. I'm really happy to have you here with us. And I think that I would like to make this switch and transition to what Professor Stomka has said, that the book is not only for the sociology students, but it is for the educated people, the average educated people. You represent the Ukrainian Catholic University, and we're really happy that we had this opportunity to work with your colleagues and to make this edition in Ukrainian. And I do believe that this is the opportunity that when you have been using this book from the very beginning, and when you're spreading this knowledge, not only in your universities but outside it as well how do you see the role of this book in the current educational conditions and whether you believe it's relevant for ukraine how do you see that it is a pleasure for me today to be here with you in this presentation, and I'm really grateful to Professor Stomtka for collaboration with Ukrainian Catholic University. We're always happy to see you here in our buildings, in our location, but right now we have this time while we have to communicate and talk through the medium of communication technologies. And I do believe in the university we have the two main characters acting, the author and the text, if I may put these words together. I'm really grateful for your presentation and who had the opportunity to listen to Professor Stomka for the first time. You were able to feel his atmosphere, his logic, and to feel his logic and his life. And the text, when you have told us about the history and the story, the architecture of the book, how you personalize this text and what we have today, it all makes this book very interesting for Ukrainian context today. And I'm also really grateful to our partners as well for having this opportunity to read your work, to read this text in Ukrainian language today. It is as well very important for all of us because it also becomes a certain tool for us and sets out the horizons for us to keep on reflecting, to keep on thinking and opening the new reality for us. And your presentation has been a very interesting for me as well and what you have said has been very interesting for me because i consider ukrainian catholic university as one of the structure that is in constant dynamic and in constant development and the task that we set for ourselves is not only in building the academical environment and academic reflection of the good quality, but also in creating the space, the academical space, building the certain environment so that our students and our and our educators can work in and our professors can work in and coexist in. This is one of the tasks that we set for ourselves. I was really interested in this sort that I have seen in your book, the one that corresponds with the moral issues. And if I may, I would like to reflect upon that as well, because it has been just two weeks ago that we have organized in our Faculty of Social Sciences, we have organized our third international conference based in our 
universities on the goals of the human development um, on the values of human development in digital age. And one of the consequences and outputs that I can identify for myself is that, that we cannot consider and not consider, think about the future, avoiding the moral categories, avoiding moral logic. I do believe that future is basically an ethical, a moral category. And we can see that when we think of all of our visions, strategies, when we're going to ask the question of not only how we can implement them, but also setting out the question why we want to have this vision of the future implemented, why it is the future that we want to have for our company, for our university, or for our for our country. And I do believe what we should cherish is something that we might call a moral imagination. You mentioned the sociological imagination, but I believe what we have to develop and what we have to grow is the moral imagination itself. Because I believe if our moral imagination is going to become outdated or is going to be lost, then the technological rationality is going to build up the architecture of our social connections. And then there will be less wise and there's going to be a more how and our unbelievable informational and communication technologies that give us a very good outline and give us the opportunity of finding the answers to the how questions. We are now struggling with answering the question, the why questions. We have mentioned the moral imagination in this case, because I am sure that the moral imagination gives us the opportunity to answer all of the why questions and to launch the chains of the moral actions. So my second conclusion that I would like to share with you as the results of our conferences on the overall integral de human development is that moral imagination and moral action is the integral components for the integral development of humans. So why is that? Of three reasons, because the moral imagination and the moral actions are something that is ingrained in humans. The opportunity for imagining yourself as a kind person and making a step towards this direction, towards implementation of this vision is the sense and the main potential of our humanness. And I believe that the moral imagination and the moral actions are basically integrating our rationality and integrating our opportunity to change ourselves. You know, in English, we say that the head, heart, and hand. So these three words, I do believe that they provide us the whole picture of the integrity of a person, of the of the wholesomeness of the person, of what the real person should be like. And I believe that there has to be the moral action as well, moral action targeted for the development so that our humanness became our humanity through basically moral imagination and moral action. And my sort of conclusion out of it, the one that I would like to share with you as well today is that when I'm thinking about the universities, when, I, when I'm thinking about the Ukrainian Catholic universities as well, when I'm thinking about our universities in this dynamics of moral vision, moral imagination and moral actions, I really want our universities to become those spaces, to become those labs for building up the ethos and the practice of, of serve, servant, servants. So basically, I really like what the Pope Francis has said, that the biggest service for the universities right now is providing additional education, educating for the father on service. So basically, this is the main service that the universities provide. So creating this dynamic for father for service provision is very important for us in the Catholic Ukrainian Catholic University as well. When we are thinking about our strategies as well, and for example, in our strategy 2025, that this is the current strategy for our universities, we identified our university as a university that serves. We are building ourselves vision for the U UCU as the university that serves certain needs. And 
in order for us to be continuing working in this servitude, I do believe there are two important points that are important. So cherishing the solidarity and courage, cherishing the solidarity and courage, courage the courage not only to build our moral vision, but also to have the courage to go into the moral actions, because as I've already said, that is the way to build and cherish our future. And you know that we're getting back to the next, the, the next moment of responsibility and servitude. And I believe that the architecture of your, of your thinking, of your reflection, of your book, is actually given us the hint. It gives us a hint. It leads us into this direction. It leads us to this responsibility, to the moral responsibility of those things that you've mentioned, to the idea of the civility. And this is the only the idea about the value, not only the values, because we're discussing values in many different contexts today. And the topic of value is uh, very modern and popular right now. But I believe that your text and your thoughts are going to guide us as well to the ideas of not only values, but to the virtuous ideas as well. And I believe that the virtue is becoming to the value that is going to be broadening up in time. And I'm really sure that it also connects us to this idea of the moral imagination and moral vision that is going to be fully implemented through building and restoring certain, certain virtues. This is, of course, a big challenge for all of us. And I do believe that it's a big challenge for all of the universities, communities. It's not like we're setting the task of the academic performance, but it's also about not only the academic excellence, but it's some kind of moral excellence that we're setting as well. But when we're trying to contextualize it in the space of the interhuman connections and relationships, building it up with the moral senses, it is the big challenge for all of us as well. And I'm really pleased that that's your words and your thoughts are going to be available for all of us in our native language, in Ukrainian. And I really hope that we will have more opportunities to work together, to collaborate together, to work through Zoom or to work through our face-to-face -face relationships. And we're really, really grateful to you for our collaboration. And I do hope that our mutual work will continue and grow. And to finalize, I would like to say that it's a very big uh, celebration in our sociological street or our sociology quarter. So I would like to congratulate all of my colleagues that the very good work, the very good publication, the translation of very good publication has been performed. And I really would like to congratulate all of my colleagues that all of this efforts of all of the people and the team of Hundred Gold Foundations have had these results. Yes, thank you very much, Voladima. And of course, I'm going to speak about that when uh, when we will end up the presentation of our panelists of how you can receive the book. That is definitely may a very briefly, big effort step to that. May I briefly uh, respond, but very briefly, just to, to those nice and important words of Professor Turchinovsky. Uh, first of all, I, I am very grateful for what you said about our cooperation and the possible uh, impact which my work may have on uh, Ukrainian sociological community. It is extremely rewarding and extremely nice of you to mention that. And second point is about this moral obligations and moral space. I fully share your perspective. I think that there are many ways, of course, in history of justifying moral conduct. There are many arguments, many ways to argument, of course, from metaphysical, from theological, down to more mundane. Mine is very simple. Mine argument goes from the analysis of human interpersonal world. This analysis implies the necessity of moral commitments, of moral obligations, 
It is simply the extension of the old idea of human beings as social animals, the ancient idea. So the justification of ethical or moral precepts here is sociological. It is not theological, it is not metaphysical. And that I think is uh, perhaps some added value which I am trying to give to this moral discourse. Sorry to interrupt, but I simply had to react to this extremely important uh, speech of Professor Turchinovsky. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Professor, and thank you, Volodymyr, as well, for launching out our discussion. And I would really like to thank all of you. So we're emphasizing the values and emphasizing the values that are important for us, especially in these times that we're living now, in these crossings between the society and social processes. And the role of the universities has been as well emphasized. I would like to pass the floor to Oksana Mikheyeva, now that I have mentioned universities universities who represents the teams of the researchers who have been working on making this book possible, the translation of this book possible. Their team working on the translation as well. And I would like to pass the floor to Oksana and I'd like to ask her to tell her about more about the process who has been engaged. And from your point of view, how does it feel to be working in the team that has been working on the first Ukrainian translation of this book? Thank you very much, Sofia, for passing the floor to us. And yes, my mission today is to tell you a little bit more on the team. And first of all, I would like to express my gratitude to all of the people and to tell you why this book is important for all of us today. Because the professor has started in the best way on, in creating the image of how the author gets into the new environment. I understand it clearly. That's always a challenge because when we're facing the interpretation and translation of our text and we see how they sound differently in different language. And it's a big challenge of how can you broadcast the senses so they would be understood in many different countries by many different languages that they're translated into. So we understand the responsibility that is on us when we're starting this project, when we started to translate this book. And in this case, of course, it is a pity that currently we're working online and maybe in our further on discussion, we're going to be discussing these challenges of communication online, of working online, studying online. But in this case, we were very lucky. And if we will compare it to the situations at the conferences and situations for us, the people at our department, our students, we all know that you are 11 classics. So basically, in our memory, we're still keeping those two brilliant lectures that you have held in Ukrainian Catholic University. And one of them that have clearly identified the problems that you have had discussed with Volodymyr Turchinovsky right now. And the second part, and I would like to recall it as well, there was a lecture on the Decalogue of the success in science. And it was a fantastic lecture because the book is one genre, one format, but having a direct communication with a vice person that is able to talk about the working process, about life, about destiny, about chance, with a fantastic level of self-irony, without unbelievable taste of humor. Everyone were engaged into this lecture. Everyone was living through this lecture. That was an important, tremendous event for all of us then. So I am really happy that we have not only the text, not only the book, but we've also had the contact with the person that was ready to share their wisdom and their their wisdom and their knowledge with us. So I'm really grateful for that. I'm really grateful for this partnership. I'm really grateful for your support in our communication with the right owners of this book, everything that really got us coming to this project. And I really would like to thank Ukrainian Catholic University for their support, for their support in buying the license for publishing this book. And in this context, I would like to recall our colleague Igor Skochilas, the our late colleague Igor Skochilas. He when unfortunately due to COVID, he's not with us anymore, but I was contacting him in the Ukrainian Catholic University 
Idan on this project. And because of his support, because of his desire, we were able to launch this process and this pro project, and we have made it possible. And I do believe it is important for us to now recollect this person and commemorate this person as well, who was really dear to me. And I would like to also say that it was unbelievably unbelievable pleasure to work with our translator, with Helena Teodorovic. That was a brilliant translation. We should not added the sentences that the text would read in all at once in one step just because there was a very attentive translation because the translator has worked very attentively careful with every word and in this case we have this book and it's very important when we have in a textbook it is very important for it to be readable for it to be easy to the reader you can read it very, very easy right now in this very case. And I'm really grateful to our editor, Anna Maria Volosatska. And we had a very interesting system in this case when Anna Maria was proving and reproofing all of the texts. And we have uh, go through all of the editing and Anna Maria go through all of our additional editing. So we had a very complex procedure of a very detailed and precise work with this text. The scientific edition was and supervision was by my colleagues in our department, in our, in the, Dmitro Maronovich, Danila Vysotir, Viktor Susak, and especially I'm really grateful to Miroslav Kashuk because he was the person who managed all of this process from the very beginning till the end, who was really restless, who was always keep on reminding us when and what should we do. He's joined at every stage of work. So all of that has given us the opportunity to get this project prepared and to finalize it in time. And of course, we're really grateful. It's obvious that we're really grateful. And I've started to speak about the financial side of the project as well. And you know, no, there are there are a lot of times we are forgetting about the financial and the intellectual work on the background, but there's something that the project will not be possible without. And in this case, we had really different stakeholders that were ready to support that because they've understood the importance of this project for Ukrainian society. We had the support by Ukrainian Catholic University. We have been supported by the Heinrich Bell Foundation. And we have launched with the help of Yaroslav Roshishan, who is also here with us today. And I do believe he'll say something as well. We're really grateful for that support as well because it has given us the opportunity step by step go to our final results. And a couple of words again, because Vladimir has already mentioned that as well. In the market of the sociology textbooks in Ukraine, in Ukrainian, we do not have that wide choice available. We have Antony Gerens of 1999, a classical textbook that has been translated then in the 90s and have been translated in Ukrainian as well. And then the classical translation into Ukrainian were not available. Our students have been working with the Professor Stomka's textbook translated into Russian or all of the publications available in English and Polish. In this case, we have a wider access to this text in Ukraine because it definitely is valuable for what you have mentioned, said he as well, because basically it is not a rewriting of the different concept, but this is an author text that provides the author vision about this concept that are going to be interesting for the reader. And to end up with a joke, I just wanted to say that at least now you have at least nine people who have read your book three times from the beginning till the end. I think that's a very good lunch to the markets and I do hope that it will going to be very lucky farther on on its way to the markets. Thank you. Thank you, Oksana. May I have a word? May I have a word? I'm sorry. I'm very sorry to disrupt your schedule, but I simply have to react on two points very briefly. First of all, about my, my visit to Catholic University in Lvov. And that I remember very clearly as one of the most pleasant moments in my academic uh, visits, because I have been to many universities on four continents, but I remember this as a, some kind of sp a spatial chemistry, which developed between the staff, the professors, the students, and myself. 
it happens sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. All actors, all performers and performers on this stage know about it. Somehow those days in Lvov were the days of good, excellent chemistry. That's one point. And second point is that what you described as the work in uh, publishing my book here is something that my master, American master, Robert K. Merton, called self-exemplifying case. Self-exemplifying case of what good cooperation can do. What good, well, moral links between the team of people coming from various uh, backgrounds, academic, but also the foundation, but also other uh, backgrounds, the translators, etc. how this teamwork is able to do something important. That is a self-exemplifying case of a much, much wider issue. To what extent only this kind of open cooperation with full, full of trust, full of empathy, full of mutual understanding, reciprocity, etc., etc., may lead to great results. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Oksana. Thank you very much, Professor. And Oksana has told me many, many times about this lecture when Professor Stomka has been to Lviv. And Oksana has always told me how, how, how it was, because definitely this chemistry, this connection for the professor and the audience that was very inspiring, how interesting that was and how important this lecture was for all of the participants of this event. So Professor Stomka has already recalled at the very beginning of his presentation that the Ukrainian readers will be, wouldn't be able to read of this book if it wasn't for Helena Teodorovich, who is with us and who is the translator for the Ukrainian version of this book. So Helena, we're pleased to welcome you here. Are you with us? Are you with us? Because I can't see you here. Yes, I can see you. Thank you very much. We're pleased to welcome you once again. It's a pleasure to see you here today with us. Can you please tell us the Ukrainian translation? Your work is the first Ukrainian edition of this book, and it's basically the 16th translation of this book from all over the world. And this is the big responsibility for you, for all of this team. What are your impressions on having worked to the, about on the book? What were the peculiarities to that? Good day. Good day, everyone, and thank you very much for having this opportunity to also speak up a little bit about the work that we have done. First of all, I would like to thank the author, because the work has been unbelievable pleasure for me and an interesting trip for me, because I would like to say that before that I wasn't really interested in sociology, and I must admit I wasn't really, I haven't even thought that it's a very important science, to be honest, but I fell in love with the sociology because of this text. And I'm just going to outline a couple of moments as well, and Professor Stomka has said that one of his goals was to provide the people who are only starting uh, of considering the sociology to get there with the sociological language, to give them a simple a toolkit, to give them clarity in their toolkit and in, in their understanding of sociological concept. And I do believe that he managed to do that. And my task as a translator was to translate this clarity and preciseness into Ukrainian. What were the challenges and problems in that? The professor as well has mentioned that the book has been published in 2002 for the first time. And the book has been created on this wave of joy and happiness. And maybe you might not say that those kind of emotional references would not fit to the academic book, but the book is really very light immersed with light and very positive, even though there are questions considering trauma and others, but still you can feel this light coming up from the book. And when I was 
when we were speaking about translating this book into Ukrainian and into Ukrainian context for the Ukrainian society that has very specific and particular trauma and has very specific language toolkits for describing and analyzing, reflecting on the social processes that take place in this society, has very specific wording for analyzing this network of relations, quality of relations that being created in the society itself. So basically trying to directly, strictly translate it to it, that was really challenging sometimes for all of, for, for me. But I don't know how the how the I don't know how the translators for Persian, Chinese or Japanese language are working out because then it goes to a very different cultural background and very different language background as well. But I am sure that you know the classics are called the classics because it has the potential in itself to be comprehended and to be considered by different culture in very organic way and in very natural way. And I'm, I believe that one of the challenges for the Ukrainian translation because it was that the languages are very close. And sometimes there are some certain traps that you might get into when the words may sound very similar, but when you're rereading it and you feel that there's slightly something wrong in Ukrainian context, it has the different connotation to that, a different sub a different subtone to that. So it was very important to keep up with the tone and to keep up with the nuances of the translation as well. And I was trying to I was trying to keep it up, and uh, Oksana has mentioned that as well. And I was trying to keep up to this nuances of the book, but this is this is the big challenge when you're translating into a related language. And I would like to really thank for all of the good words about my translation. But when I was now starting, when I was getting prepared, I've compared my text with something that I have seen in the book right now. I have seen the tremendous work for the. Um, academic editor, for the academic supervisor, for the literature editor, for the character that has been working on that as well. Because even if you said that my translation was good from the very beginning, but I have seen the tremendous work that all of the people after me have done with their supervision. And my friends have already waiting for this book. The, all of the friends, I've told them about the book that I have been working on. Yes, I know that maybe that is not uh, the right place for me to present my work, it's much easier for me to criticize it, but I'm really, really sorry that the photos were not included in the Ukrainian translation, because as the professor has said in his introduction, that this visual language of sociology is it's very important as well, especially that the photos have been made by the professor himself. And this is an integral part of this book. Unfortunately, we've not been able to include it into our publication, but the text is very good. And I do hope that it will be evaluated and noted down and appreciated, not only by the students, but by the broader circles of people who will read this book. I hope that our our people in who are studying theology and the students in theology are going to read it as well because you know the social and sociological imagination that the professor has mentioned and the moral imagination that mr turchinovsky as well has noted uh, but i do believe that people who are studying theology they will only benefit from reading the sociological notions as well. And I'm sure that this overall cons conceptual toolkit that's being used by Professor Stomka, I do believe that would be very, very helpful for our theologists and for our priests as well. I think that would be an interesting book for them to read. Thank you. Thank you, Helena. Professor, may, would you may, like to add up to that as well? May I have a word? Just a word, well, uh, from what you say, translating it, it was a heroic job. And now I must tell you, the book is half yours. I happily give the half of the book to you because <laughs> otherwise 
it wouldn't be possible. And now, because of technical reasons, I will disappear from the screen for some minutes because my camera is warmer even than myself. So I have to switch it off in order not to destroy my Nikon. And I will be listening all the time to you and re reacting, but without a vision. I'm sorry for that, but after an hour, my camera is so hot that I am afraid it will be destroyed. Just five or 10 minutes will be enough to disappear, okay? Yes, of course, uh, you can do that. Thank you very much, Professor. So thank you very much, Helena, as well. So we have already spoken about the education overall, about the project, how it has been implemented overall. And I would like to pass the floor to Yaroslav Rushtishin, because I know that so this is, again, a very important issue, the sociology, because I also wanted to ask you about the innovation in education and investment in education, how we can develop that as well, whether there is the demand and the vision for the investment and innovation in the education because without you without your support the book hasn't been published wouldn't have been available in ukraine if it wasn't for your support in this project yaroslav please turn your microphone on if you can. can you hear me now yes yes we can hear you now perfect well, you know, when you will be in a business for a longest period of time, you will understand that that's, that doesn't cover enough. You know, business is not enough. So businesses must have, but still not enough. And, you know, in this case, honestly, I has been connected to publishing of different books uh, in many different ways, mostly in financial, given the financial support. And I'm really happy that this book has been published as well. And I was connected to the team that has been creating this book. And, you know, without the education, it is impossible for us to speak about the innovation and to speak about any kind of changes to economy or to speak about any applicable changes, to speak about the competitiveness of the country. Because there were the times when we were having the competition just because we have a cheap work, work, work labor. And when we had the, the labor force, the cheap labor force, the standards are changing. There is now, you know, the demand is not for the money. That is, the, the demand is not in the resources or fossil fuels. It is for talent. And the talents are being built in the, uh, in the institution as Ukrainian Catholic University is and the other universities are as well. And if we are speaking about the way to edit a, to publishing the books. I do believe that there are many institutions that have been connected to the urban development of our city. Maybe you believe that was the um, women's group. Later on, we have created the space that, of trust with the, almost the same people who have been working in this direction as well so when we have been writing the strategy you know the first the main goal for our institution was to write a strategy for the city the city strategy that would take Lviv to the map of the world and our group has been dealing with that as well and I would like to say that it has been a very nice breakthrough later on all of this work has been provided to the Lviv Council and I am still this member of the supervisory board uh, or the supervisory board of the council or the council of the competitiveness of our city and I would like to say that it's hard for us to evaluate the academical impact of our city. And I would like to say, I'm getting, I've got back from Kharkiv and I would like to say we have competitors, competitors in the academic level because every six person in our city in the city of Lviv is a student. Then the density of potential young people in Kharkiv is much higher than for us. If so we have some other goals that we still can reach. So the result of this activities for us wasn't even though, you know, that's, uh, you know, I'm not a scientist, so to speak, that I'm only speaking on the social component to this 
way. So that was the con conclusion that we made. We believe that we lack the institutions because, you know, the persons there, the people are asking the questions that ideology provides you the answer with that, but the institutions act. We needed some action. We needed some actions and we needed this movement forward and we really wanted to create those institutions. And we've invested into different spheres. We have created many different institutions. One of them was the Lviv Business School in Lviv um, in Ukrainian Catholic University and together with Ukrainian Catholic University based on Ukrainian Catholic University, we have created this group. And I do believe that this synergy there has provided us with the best results. This is one of the best schools in business schools in Ukraine because it has been built on the very good and fruitful foundation. But when I have become a politician, I have understood that another important event in Lviv history was having the sociology department in, in Ukrainian Catholic University as well, because this is about the fundamental things that really help us to keep on developing the society and that help us to build the right behaviors for the politicians as well. You know, the sociology is not about the politicians, but in politics, you cannot avoid sociology. That is very important as well. So maybe in some way, we could have helped here as well. And when uh, Oksana Mikheva, Professor Oksana Mikheva has come up to us with this, with this point of view, so we know that there's no other way that we can avoid this event from happening. But I would like to speak on the education overall, if I may. So the education is, if we're speaking on the urbanism, you know, the education is the must have level. You know, there are these fundamental levels and the level of the competitiveness. You know, we cannot say about this lack of education anymore. So high quality education is now the must have, is the fundamental, is the basics for the competitiveness. And uh, we were still not on the high on that level to be competitive in the world. If speaking about this demand for the talent and the competition for the talent that is currently being held. Publishing good textbook is very important as well. You know, yesterday I have been to Kharkiv and we have been talking to the rector of the private university of architecture in Kharkiv. And we have been discussing on how she, in what way, illegally she gets the textbooks to Ukraine for, for her university only to have this opportunity to teach people. We will try to help with that as well with the legislation, but Ukrainian Catholic University does it legally, even in this way to providing this fundamental work to translate them and to publish them for all of the society. And what I also wanted to add up in the end, because Professor Stomka has slightly go, gone to the second book of his, that is this, that I have also read, and that I believe for this book, it is being said that we have to go to the moral society, that we are heading towards the moral society. And Ukrainian Catholic University, Catholic University is, is moving into this direction as well, because I have been the member of the working group on building up on this moral core or the mental core, as far as I remember, for the student. And I believe that, you know, it's not about the knowledge that identify the competitiveness of people in the world, but it actually gives this opportunity for them to understand what was the moral backbone that they have received, what was the moral foundation that have they built they have built during their studies and I'm really happy and honored to have been connected to this work as well and this moral this moral society that we are heading to that we should all get to is something very important for us and it's not just because it looks nice it's not just because it's going to be very nice to write about it why it is important for us because it is effective because it is productive because it is competitive the moral society is competitive society there's a lot of social connections that are being made in this moral society they do not require additional stamps or visas. So it is being built on those three foundations as Professor Stumka has identified, the trust, the loyal, loyalty and solidarity. He has already numbered a thing, and this is the quote that I have already mentioned from his book, which means that we already have 
the new edition, I guess, for the book, and I will have to consider that as well. But basically, I believe that as one of the co-founders and the organizers of the Biennale of Trust, I do want to say that uh, Professor Stomka is the acknowledged professor in this direction. And as far as I know, that Father Bogdan Trach, director of the Ukrainian Catholic University, has invited you to this Biennale that we've held. I didn't manage to come at this moment, but I do believe that we really want to keep this invitation to Lviv open because the trust is something that really guides us to the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yaroslav. Um, thank you very much. I would like to identify that, make it clear. Professor Stomka, would you like to say a couple of words to that as well? Well, just uh, just a word of, of thanks for all kind works, uh, words that Professor Rushishin has said. But uh, relating to this issue of uh, trust, which he mentioned at the end of his talk, I uh, have produced a book on trust in, uh, in English uh, quite a long ago, then it was translated into Chinese, into Russian, and now I'm working on a completely new book on trust, because I have become convinced even more during the time of the pandemic, during the hard time we are going through, how trust is crucial and absolutely crucial for healthy social life. So I got back to my ideas about trust and I'm trying to enrich them, to rework them. And probably that will be a new job for Galina one day <laughs> when this book is completed. Because um, I, I strongly believe that trust is number one among those various moral bonds which we discussed. It is uh, a component of all others. It is a component of reciprocity. It is a component of loyalty, of solidarity, of uh, even of justice, of course. So um, that opens a door for further cooperation if life admits and fate allows, I will be very much ready to, to cooperate on those other issues with you and uh, your universities and your publishing houses. It is a really a very rewarding experience I have had so far. Now I'm coming back on screen. Okay, we can now see you. It's a pleasure to see you again. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you very much, Yaroslav. And thank you very much for noting down as well that we're currently live in the world where there is the main competition and the main struggle is for talent, is for the knowledge. And this is one of the main late motives for us as well when we are identifying the values um, and the knowledge that is very important for all of us today. We have some questions. We have some questions, I will take it out. As for the student of Kiev National University named after Taras Shevchenko, I have two questions for you. After I have taken a look at your book, first of all, whether the revolution of dignity was a trauma for change for in Ukrainian society, and has it regained the uh, the sense of revolution compared for the revolution that happened, the social revolution that happened in the Central and Eastern Europe in the end of the 80s, whether they're comparable. And the second question is, what will be the impact of coronavirus crisis for the further on development of the human community? So there is the question on the revolution of dignity and the question of how the coronavirus is going to impact the further on development of uh, our society. If you can reflect on that, please. Sure. <clears throat> the first question is extremely wide and extremely rich, and um, it goes back 
to this uh, huge revolutionary transformations which have occurred in Europe uh, at the end of the 20th century. And uh, those were truly revolutionary changes. And as all revolutionary changes, they produce a new world. A new world for many people is an expected and awaited and uh, the world they dreamed about. But for many people, it is a world which shakes the foundations of their normal life, their routines, their uh, customs, their everyday ways of adaptation to life. And that is the reason for those traumatic experiences, which uh, I have described in one chapter of the book, but also um, in much wider publications around uh, 1990s, particularly when uh, the capitalist democratic consumer society have emerged suddenly almost overnight in Poland and in neighboring countries. And um, that kind of traumatic experience is of course a temporary, but history has um, a long stretch. And therefore some elements of trauma, which I described more specifically are still around are still around in my country and I'm sure in your country as well. Uh, we were a bit earlier. We had a bit more time to get adapted and uh, to overcome traumas. You had a bit less time, but I think we still are going through some uncertainties some uh, big questions about the social order, political order. Somebody said that um, sociology is an important thing, necessary kind of knowledge for politicians. Unfortunately, politicians don't know it. Most of the politicians don't understand it because if they do, they would be much more concerned with the thinking and feeling of the common people than with their images on TV. And uh, I do hope that this traumatic aftershocks of great revolutions, which occurred in our part of the world, post-communist revolutions, that those aftershocks will sooner or later become overcome. But unfortunately, the current crisis due to factors of completely independent sort to which we don't have much to say and much control, namely pandemics, the consequences in economic life, the consequences in everyday life, the consequences in cultural life, they produce new traumas, completely new and different kind of traumas for many people. And from the perspective which I describe in the book, those traumas have mostly to do with interpersonal space, with interpersonal relations, which have become extremely impoverished which have become devoid of normal human touch, which develops only in face-to-face -face relations. Of course, we are now together on screen. Of course, we interact, but that is different. That is different. It lacks some elements which in face-to-face -face conversation are invisible are not clearly definable, but which are crucial. So our relations are very much impoverished. Our economies are very much impoverished by the consequences of the pandemics. So coming out from this long stretch of post-communist traumas, 
will be even longer, unfortunately, because of that particular situation. On the other hand, there is some hope, some hope that people sooner or later will understand that we are all in, a, in the same boat. Pandemics is not selecting on basis of class, education, race, ethnic background. We are all in the same boat, fighting some strange, invisible, awful enemy. And that may be a factor of an optimistic sort. Maybe that sooner or later, later rather than sooner, but it will produce some feeling of community again on the wide scale, human community, necessary feeling for developing that moral space, moral capital, which as we argued with Professor Turchinovsky, together is a crucial factor for the well-being and development of society. That's as much as I can say ad hoc to those interesting questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. We do not have any additional questions now, but I really would like to thank you for covering this issue of the impact of pandemic, how it influences our society. Yes, it influences the economy, but it also influences all of the people as well, and how it influences this feeling of commonality of society. I would like to ask our, maybe some of the speakers would like to have an additional questions or maybe to bow to type it into the chats because we're almost out of time and if you have any questions then we can take one question and if no questions left then we would like to close it up then if maybe would like someone would like to speak up and maybe would like someone would like to have a question to professor yes Oksana yes if I may then I would be really happy to have this opportunity because I really was surprised with what Helena has said that the visual materials is something that we're lacking in this book. And we all know how fascinated you are about photography. But your other book is important for me as well. The visual sociology is as well important for me. Can you please speak a little bit on the role of the visuals when we're speaking about social issues as well? Well, yes, yes, I have been uh, always um, fascinated with images, um, but mostly with uh, photography. Photography for me became a form of, well, quasi-artistic expression, which somehow I felt I need, but also um, as a way of recording social experiences, social world. And in fact, um, going around the world, with my Nikon, which is now serving our discussion here. I was taking a lot of pictures of social situations everywhere in many countries, including very exotic places. I, I was, for example, uh, teaching uh, for almost a year at the University of Tasmania, close to the Antarctic uh, at Hobart, just to mention those exotic places. And exotic places are always good for photographers because they, they show something strange. For example, on the roads in Tasmania, there is a road sign which shows penguins. And it means, be careful, penguins are crossing here. So, you know, those observations are very useful for sociology, for sociological imagination because we are bodily creatures. We may be very happy about our souls and our minds and our ideas, but after all, we are bodily creatures, which means that we are visible. We are physically observable, we are visible. And in our behavior, in our gestures, in our body language, in our movements, in uh, our groups, etc. All elements of our social reality are reflected. 
So the visual mm, documentation is a very crucial element of sociological imagination. And therefore in this Polish edition and also in the Russian edition, there are some uh, of my pictures, but I think uh, it is also sometimes good to stretch the imagination of the students instead of giving it just in color and immediately visible. So we make bigger challenge for Ukrainian students now without those pictures. I think it is, it is very, very good and it, it, it should serve well the education of Ukrainian students. If I am speaking, I just want to say my last word, like a convict in court, which has a last word. And my last word is a word of thanks. I really appreciate very much your attitude, your friendship, your readiness to cooperate, your effort, tremendous effort, particularly in translating, but also in arranging all that, in, in uh, raising uh, funds, etc. This cooperative work which produced this Ukrainian version of my book. I am really very grateful. And um, as I mentioned, uh, my work is now available in some 15 languages, but I tell you that uh, there is some particular emotional feeling about it being available in Ukrainian language. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you very much for those kind words. And I would really like to say that it is especially important for us that we now have this book in Ukrainian because it also means that we're bringing you closer to all of us, even though you're based in Poland, but now we have part of your wisdom and knowledge in Ukrainian as well. So, Summing up, I would like to say that when we were getting ready to this event and, you know, I had a very different feeling than, than we have had it today. I thought that is going to be a discussion on a book, but I didn't understand that was even a level higher than just a discussion or the presentation of the book. That was the understanding of where can we go to in the future? What is the other possibilities for the development of our society, the opportunity to be joined by the overall feeling of justice? And I would like to repeat one of the final topics about these opportunities for the civil societies, that it is an important and integral part of the democratic state. And I'm really happy that by publishing this book, we are also making our impact for the further on development of the civil society in Ukraine. I would really like to thank Professor Stomka, Professor Turchinovsky, Ms. Oksana Mikheyeva, Halina Teodoreshin, for and Mr. Yaroslav Rushchishin for being with us. I would like to thank Miroslav Kashuk, who has been with us here. We can't see him on the video, but he is the person who made this book possible. So, Miroslav, we're pleased to welcome you here. If it wasn't for Miroslav, then this book wouldn't have been implemented and created that effectively as we did it. And we're really grateful to Miroslav for supporting all of us and for managing all of these processes with us as well. I have already sent a link for this book in the chat box. This book will be available in the Library of Ukrainian Catholic University. And as a foundation, we also have uh, the very limited um, limited print books and we're, we're going to be sharing it with different institutions and we're going to provide it to the target audiences that will be really interested to learn about the sociology for their own and for will be able to learn the thoughts and opinions of Professor Stomka on the link, and I will definitely send to all of the registered participants of this event, you will receive the link of identifying how you can receive the book, but I would like to say that the first publication is very limited, but I do hope that we will have this opportunity to print this book in the bigger 
numbers later on. So in order to receive this book, you will have to fill in the application form that is available on the link in the chat box as well. So I would like to thank all of our participants for today's meetings. It was a pleasure for me to see some of you visually. I do hope that soon we will have this time coming up to us when we'll be able to sit in the single room and having this discussion on society, on the changes that are happening in the society and the changes that influence in our society, that influence the development of our society overall. And I would like to wish you all the best night and thank you very much.